Uh, I thank uh, Dr. Rehman uh, for inviting me. And today we'll be uh, talking uh, about the various databases of genetic variants and how they are uh, useful for us in interpreting the variants. So the question comes with, uh, we are doing a lot of uh, next generation sequencing and a lot of variants that are identified. Why do we really need to interpret a variant? And uh, the reason is that if you see this picture, you are going to see that uh, it almost looks like some dry leaves there, but actually really it's a camouflaged lizard, which is very harmful to some insect there. On the other hand, if you have another picture of a very harmful animal that you would be scared of, but that person there is not really scared of. So what looks may not be really true. So a harmless looking variant, like a synonymous variant that causes the severe disease of progeria can be disease causing. On the other hand, we have various harmful looking variants like stop codon mutations, which are present as normal polymorphisms in the population. And that is why it is important to interpret each and every variant that is found in all these next generation sequencing and high throughput sequencing. And that is where the population databases and the known mutation databases are very helpful for our interpretation. So just to understand the databases, we need to understand a few definitions like allele is defined as two or more versions of the DNA sequence at a genomic location. So at a particular location, you can have uh, allele A or a allele B uh, at that particular uh, locus. Genetic variation or variant is defined as any difference in the DNA sequence compared to the reference genome that we have. And copy number variation is difference in the copy numbers, which are more than 1000 base pairs in size. Polymorphism refers to a variation which is present in more than 1% of a population, which we usually consider as benign with some caveats. So what is important from these databases is what we get is the allele frequency. So allele frequency is basically the incidence of a gene variant in a population and it is calculated as the number of times the allele of interest is observed in a population divided by the total number of copies of alleles at that particular locus. And this is the very important number that we get from many of the normal population databases. So a wild type allele is considered which is more common in the population. Minor alleles are the alleles that are less frequent in the population. And hence the minor allele frequency is the frequency that we get from the MAF we call. So that is the minor allele frequency which we get from the normal population database. So when we do a exome sequencing or whole genome sequencing, if we go out finding uh, the mutation, it is really difficult to do in a very general way. Rather, you will have to use some systematic way to identify the variant. Now, once you identify the variant, Unless you follow a systematic way to classify it, you will end up misclassifying the variant. So basically, these are the various steps that we follow when we want to classify a variant. And these are the steps which are integrated into the American College of Medical Genetics and the American Association of Molecular Pathology guidelines. So which are based on information about the location, functional effect of the variant, its frequency in the normal population, whether that variant is reported in other similar cases, what are the pathogenicity prediction scores for that variant, what is the Mendelian segregation in that family, and any functional assay that is available. Based on all these evidences, ultimately we classify that variant as benign, likely benign, pathogenic, likely pathogenic, or a variant of uncertain significance. So today I'll talk about mainly these two evidences which form a large amount of uh, evidence when we interpret these variants. So what are the population databases? So population databases are database of variants detected in individuals from general population. They are obtained through sequencing of exomes or genomes of normal individuals in a general population. And the participants need to be from different ethnic groups because the patients come from different ethnic groups. And they are really representative of the human genetic variation that is present. So why these uh, databases are needed? So reference database of human genomic variants helps us to identify what is different and what is likely to be disease causing. So there are essential tools in the gene variant identification. 
they help us sort through millions of common and largely benign variants which are present in the human genome and then help us identify those rare variants which could be likely to be disease causing so if you look at the frequency in the no, uh, variant population we can see that almost 99.9 percent .9 of human genome is same in all of us but it is that 0.1 percent difference which makes us all different from each other and if we look at that 0.1 percent difference it is very different in different populations so you don't have the same difference between uh, individuals in all populations and hence it is very important to have population databases which are population specific and when we look at the variants so you have on the y-axis the effect size of the variants and uh, x-axis is the frequency of variants so in mendelian genetics or in rare diseases we are mainly concerned with the large effect size and the rare variants so that is what we uh, are interested in, whereas the common variants with small effect size are the ones which are found in GWAS studies where uh, you try to associate them with the disease. So various efforts have been done globally for developing different genomic databases like the 1000 Genome Project, which was the initial, and then the Exome Variant Server, which was an Exome database. We have the Exec, which was a large database of exomes followed by the genome aggregation database that is the nomad which most of us use today and then there were some smaller databases like the greater middle east variome and the genome asia was something which was of the south asians and many more are there so all of these databases have their own uh, uh, websites kind of where you can query for frequency of that particular allele in that population and NOMAD is the vastly used database because of its large number of individuals that have been put together, many from the case control studies of adult, on, adult onset diseases. And these really help us to uh, find the normal variants in the population. But there are certain issues or limitations with these databases. Like usually we put a cutoff of 1% because we consider 1% as the polymorphism frequency but that filter may not be able to uh, that filter may remove some of the pathogenic variants for example thalassemia is very common in our population so if you put a filter of one percent we have carrier frequency of thalassemia of three percent those variants will be removed so a balance has to be raised uh, based on the population that you are studying and the diseases which are common in that particular population we have to put the cutoffs then there is representation of the population. So many of these data databases that I showed you, the NOMAD, the EXAC, or the 1000 Genome, they really do not have the Indian population represented. And that is why many times we face these issues that we are not able to interpret the Indian variants, which are not represented here. And then we end up thinking that they could be pathogenic. So population specific databases are very essential as they act as reference databases for that particular population and we can see an example here so this is a chd7 uh, gene where a heterozygous missense variant was identified it got classified as variant of uncertain significance because of absence in these databases but when we looked at in the internal database in indian population it was a very common allele so this changes the whole interpretation of that particular variant and hence it is very important to have population specific especially for Indian populations. So there have been some efforts towards generating these databases, although we don't have a very large Indian database, but there have been some uh, publications where small number of uh, uh, patients data has been put together and available in the public domain. Uh, <clears throat> So one of them is the Genome Asia, where again, few Indian contribution is there, but mainly it is from the South Asian countries that this database is available. Then Indigenomes is another database which was put together for about 1000 uh, genomes by IGIB, uh, where you can again go to the website and find the frequency of that variant in Indian population. We ourselves put together a, a, a database of 1,455 exomes because of uh, absence of these databases. So we thought that let us put together all our uh, exomes. So the SGPGI uh, uh, AIMS 
CDFD and KMC Manipal together, we put together about 1,455 exomes that were done for various diseases. And the variants which caused the disease were removed and the remaining variants would act as a population database. Now, this is not the most ideal database, but in absence of a population database, this is the best that we can have. And so this uh, uh, database was published and then it is available freely on our website for download for the various allele frequencies in the 1500 almost exomes for anyone to use. And this has really been helpful to us uh, while interpreting the variants because many of the variants which we end up thinking that they could be <coughs> disease causing or in the variant of uncertain significance, we find them in the Indian population to be common variants. Now, a major effort is being done under the Genome India project by the Department of Biotechnology, where about 10,000 human genomes, normal human genomes are being sequenced. This uh, sequencing is done from samples from all across the country, different uh, <coughs> patients, uh, different normal individuals have been uh, identified uh, trying to include all the ethnic groups of the Indian population. Although this number is much smaller compared to our huge population, but still this is a big uh, initiative that has been started. And hopefully when this database is available, then it will solve many of our problems of interpretation. Another types of databases that are very important in interpreting a variant are the databases of already reported cases. This also helps us to identify whether it is pathogenic uh, or vivo US. If that particular variant is already reported either in OMIM or PubMed, or we have the paid databases like the human gene mutation database or a free database like ClinVar, so here, if a patient is already reported with that particular variant and with that particular phenotype, then it becomes <coughs> very easy to interpret that variant. Another important and very useful uh, database is Decipher, which is very useful for interpreting the copy number variation. So when you do a microarray, uh, uh, array CGH, and you find either a deletion or duplication of large region of the genome, there you need to interpret whether it is likely to be pathogenic or not. And Decipher is a very nice database which provides you with the genes that are pro present in that particular deletion or duplication and whether that particular gene is copy number sensitive or not and whether it is reported in normal population as well as in the deceased individuals. So this is also a very useful tool in uh, interpreting the variants that you identify in the microarray CGH. However, all these large databases also raise a lot of social, ethical, legal uh, issues because of the uh, private information that comes out in public domain. And that also needs a lot of uh, discussions as we go on to develop these large databases. So in summary, the known mutation databases are very helpful in quick identification and reporting of a disease causing variant in diagnostics. Normal population databases help us in segregation of the benign polymorphic variants, and these need to be population specific for representation of different subsets of population, and they play a very important role in the disease variant identification. We give a lot of importance to the frequency of allele in the population while interpreting a variant. 